to bring up your next comic. Very funny gentleman, as everyone is. Uh, you might have seen him on Comedy Central, as well as 30 Rock. Please give a very warm round of applause for the funny John Mooney! <laughs> so, uh, your first comment was talking about wondering whether or not he was gay. Uh, I am the guy that everyone thinks is gay, and this wouldn't bother me so much, except it just reminds me of how non-threatening I really am. <laughs> because when I get angry, I want people to be terrified of me, but the problem is, uh, I don't get menacing, I just get flamboyant! <laughs> My voice gets even higher than it is. I start to get really pissy. You should see me while I'm yelling at my son. It's like a like a Broadway choreographer yelling at a dance captain backstage. It's like, oh. <laughs> Why is it, young man, that when I plan a play date for you and your friends, you have to go and crucify it? <laughs> I'm taking the Brazilian martial arts known as capoeira. Capoeira, como? Capoeira. <laughs> Utilizes the sassiness and attitude of the Brazilian dance known as samba. <laughs> learned a lot of things, Dick, in capoeira. I've learned how to move, I've learned how to glare. I've also learned that capoeira has nothing to do with martial arts. <laughs> there is no punching, there is no kicking, when it just gets down to brass tacks, all capoeira is is two guys dancing around in a circle, waiting for the right time to start making out. <laughs> disculpa, say you, disculpa. <laughs> I don't know, man. I should probably just uh, own up to the fact that even though I'm 100% Irish, I'm just never going to get cast as the South Boston thug in the sequel to The Departed. <laughs> which, uh, which is fine, you know, it's fine. It just reinforces my theory that I was born in the wrong century, because I may not be a tough guy by today's standards. But you bet your ass you wouldn't be messing with my shit. If this were 19th century Victorian London. <laughs> <laughs> Are you late with your payment to me again, <laughs> good sir? <laughs> I should expect remuneration upon my next visit, lest you wish to receive an icy stare through my monocle. <laughs> <laughs> I totally thought I forgot my iPod. Oh, you guys have iPads, right? Yes? Yeah. You have to have an iPod if you live in a city. You have to have that thing, man. It takes the edge off, an otherwise horrible, horrible place to be between the fire trucks and the ambulances and the police cars. Oh my God, it's just a wonderful thing to take the edge off. The other day, I stepped in this guy's uh, foot by accident and he was totally like, why you white mother? You're lucky I'm a righteous brother. Otherwise, I'd mess your stuff up. But because I was listening to my iPod, all I heard him say was, You're once, twice, three times a lady. That was okay. I, um, I don't know about you, but uh, I have a hard time trying to have a conversation while listening to my iPod, because I think I'm saying one thing, but something else is coming out of my mouth. Like, I was in a deli this morning, and I could have sworn I said to the guy, I'd like a coffee black, one sugar, but because I had my iPod on, what I actually said was, I like my cock black sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized I wasn't wearing an iPod at all. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> So I was at a pornography store the other day 
giving those wayward gentlemen a very stern look. And I was wanting to see a poster for the Pornography Awards. The Pornography Awards. Well, now, I didn't want to brag, but <laughs> I would definitely win a porn award if there were categories like Best Listener, <laughs> Best Guy You Like as a Friend. <laughs> I hurt my shoulder recently, and uh, I told the doctor it was from playing Quidditch, and, uh, <laughs> and he didn't believe me. <laughs> the nerve. He said to me, you know, John, you're clearly not athletic, and you're a married man, so let's just be honest, all right? How often do you masturbate? What? <laughs> what? Buy a girl a drink first, all right? <laughs> There's no right way to answer that question. I think that's really rude. So I just looked at this doctor in the eye, answered his question with a question. After he asked me that, I said to him, I, I, I looked at him in the eye, I raised my imaginary glass of champagne and said, well, doctor, how many stars are in the sky? <laughs> Fuck. Zero dollars, 18 years. Um, <laughs> you know, when you think about it, uh, masturbate is such a... a vulgar word for an already sad event. That's why, uh, that's why I prefer the term rendezvous for one. Rendezvous for one. <laughs> because that way you're whisked away to a world of like romance so, and weekends in the Hamptons or Paris. Rendezvous for one. Because when you're a married guy like I am and you're reduced to self-abuse, oh, I don't know, six times a week because we don't have sex after nine o'clock because Dancing with the Stars might be on. Jennifer Lopez is now hosting American Idol. And what do you mean you're not getting paid to do another Sean Lynch show and you're forced to pull your pun every time you're horny that you fucking torn a ligament in your shoulder? When you're a married guy and you gotta do that, Think of it as a rendezvous for one. You're not a chronic masturbator. You're a hopeless romantic. Ta-da! That's my time, everybody. Thank you very much. I'm John Rubin.